Hi, you guys. So I wanted to drop a quick Real Housewives of New Jersey video because I got some tea. And it's related to the upcoming episode of Real Housewives of New Jersey, so I thought you might appreciate knowing it now. So here's what I want you guys to know. I got some tea that the meeting that happened at Jackie Goldschneider's house that Vanessa supposedly went and spoke to Jackie and said whatever was said, I want to let you know that the other Vanessa was at that meeting. So there were two Vanessas at that meeting. And so the big question is, which Vanessa spilled the tea? And I don't know the answer to that, only Jackie does. But I do know that Jackie Goldschneider uh, was upset with Teresa because of Evan's cheating rumors that were spread around which Jackie Goldschneider believes came from Teresa. And what's interesting about that is Jackie Goldschneider didn't blame Margaret as much as she blamed Teresa at that time. And then I guess it shifted to Margaret, maybe because Margaret was the one to start the rumor and Teresa was the one who brought it out on the show. So she wasn't really sure who to blame. So initially she blamed Teresa, because the most damage came from it coming out on the show. And then she blamed Margaret because she was the source and felt really betrayed by her as a friend. So that might make a lot more sense for you in regards to Jackie Goldschneider, you know, Judas Jackie, right? So I wanted to share that with you. So who is the other Vanessa? I heard she's very nice. And you can see from her Instagram, She's a certified life coach, advocate, and specialist in toxic narcissistic abuse recovery, helping you connect with self, grow, and to live your best life. So this is the other Vanessa that was with Louis Ruelas when he met Teresa. So what's interesting about Vanessa Moretta is that she was with Louis Ruelas when Louis Ruelas met Teresa Judice. A lot of people don't know that. Vanessa Moretta was living in a house on Jersey Shore when Louis Ruelas happened to bump into Teresa Judice per the story he told Carlos King at the live they did together. And he sees Teresa, he doesn't know who she is, has no idea, but her his son does. And his son says, Dad, oh my God, it's Teresa Judice. And, you know, Louis kind of figures it out as he tells the story, you know, as it goes on. And, um, of course, this all occurs on It Happened on Bay Boulevard, LLC, which, of course, is where uh, is the company that Louis Ruelas bought the house that him and Teresa reside in. And uh, there it is. It happened on Bay Boulevard. So this may explain why Louis Ruelas was leaving the Jersey Shore with his son to go to his other house in New Jersey mid-weekend because Vanessa Moretta was his roommate in the house in New Jersey Shore. So he was going to his independent residence for the next few days. And then he has friends over, I think is the way the story goes. And he starts talking to Teresa Judice, who's partying her ass off at the shore. But he doesn't stay at the shore because of course, Vanessa Moretta is there. So probably wasn't conducive to, if he was interested in Teresa pursuing her while he was still with this other person. So Louis Ruelas was a really good boyfriend to Vanessa Moretta. He took her to... I think it was Vegas and got Rolls Royces for her, pick her up at the airport and all this great stuff. They took private jets places. And so she was like, wow, this guy's amazing. But the problem was at the end of the relationship after he meets Teresa, he ghosts Vanessa. So like literally ghosts her. Now, I don't know the degrees that he ghosts her. Like, did he pay the rent in the Jersey house or did he just kick her out? Or like, how did that go? I have no idea. Or maybe he was honorable and paid it to the end of the summer and just said, get out. I don't know. Like, but he ghosts her. Like he's that's it. Like he leaves that day, never comes back is what I understand. Actually, one correction. It wasn't Vegas. It was Miami. So it turns out that Vanessa Riser and Vanessa Moretta both share in common this trauma from narcissism. 
Uh, and so they did a show together and I thought I'd introduce you to Vanessa and Vanessa. <laughs> So now I'm gonna play you a five minute clip from December of 2020, I think it's that time frame, from Vanessa Riser's Instagram of a live she did with Vanessa. And I may have said Vanessa Moretto's name wrong, I don't remember in this video if I did or I didn't, but it's you'll hear it pronounced correctly in this video, so excuse me if I did, you know that's a Dana thing. Uh, <laughs> All right, let me play this for you. You might get something out of this. I'm Vanessa Reiser. Um, this is my business partner and my favorite life coach, Vanessa Moretto. And um, specifically today, we wanted to address fantasy versus reality with the narcissist. So we've been talking a lot lately about how they live in a fantasy world and how when you give them any real experience, somebody gets sick, somebody dies, um, anything like that, they tend to not fare very well. Bursting their like fantasy bubble is like something that they kind of have a reaction to. So um, I know like a lot of our clients express um, frustration because, you know, reality is coming. There's nothing you could do about it. I mean, we're all gonna, you know, have moments where it's not, you know, um, a fantasy. So any, like, V, any, anything come to mind around, like, any experiences where you remember feeling like they changed because of reality? Um, Yes, and also through clients. So when you, when I've spoken to people, I know we talked about this the other day because we had this like epiphany and this aha moment. So when you look, at, when I look through, you know, my clients or even my own experience, um, it seems that when people have any type of ailment um, or illness or something that impedes on the relationship, meaning like, okay, because they are always in fantasy and everything's always amazing and perfect in their world for them, if you end up getting sick or you have, you know, an injury or you change something that abrupts their fantasy and, and their, um, what they think is, you know, the perfect world that they want to be in, they start looking for a new main supply. So they'll start... Yeah things will start changing and things will start, you know, happening. And then they start, you know, you think to yourself, like, what's going on? Like, why are things changing? But um, when Vanessa and I spoke the other day, we were taking what our clients um, have said to us, plus our own experiences, and we've found a common denominator. The common denom denominator is, is when you are imperfect in their eyes, or you're not going to be able to run around and do what they need to do because now you have a medical issue or you have a broken leg or so it's it sounds kind of crazy but we realize that when you take all the stories that we've heard from our clients and our own personal experience that it's now you're abrupting their life so then now they have to find that person who can go off on the weekends and have a great time and doctors like no we're not we're not getting there so um, it's something that we've been actually diving deep into um, the last week or so. And um, I just feel like we're pulling it apart slowly and really getting down to the nitty gritty of it. Because when you look at it as a whole, yes, you have your common denominators and your factors of what these people are like and how they um, kind of run their lives. But when you get down to it, because everyone always asks the question, why? Why, you know, why did this happen? Why did they do this? We know that the narcissist um, doesn't love. They have, they are not capable of love and compassion and empathy, which we all, we, we understand that. But at the same time, what makes them change their supply? What makes them move forward? Like there's, there's something that causes the shift. There's people who are with a narcissist, you know, and they're the main supply for, 30 years, eight years, a year and a half, a year, you know, like what makes, what changes? So we've been kind of dry, kind of drilling that down and trying to figure out what 
is the like the cause. So some of you guys asked me if I think Louis Ruelas will stay with Teresa Judice if the show ends. And based on that, I'd say no. But you never know. So I wanted to share this with you because, first of all, I never knew that Louis Ruelas was with Vanessa 2.0 when he met Teresa. That was like a thing I didn't know. It's really important, I thought. And second, I want you to contemplate Vanessa and Vanessa and their sort of common bonds, right? And then the third thing I want to mention, which I think is really important for the episode coming up, which is why I bring it up, is that... Is Vanessa 2.0 the one that spilled the tea about Louis Verwellis to Jackie Goldschneider if that happened? Or is it the other one? I don't know. I'm just saying it's something to think about. Two Vanessas at this Jackie Goldschneider meeting to help Jackie get dirt on Teresa because she was the one who outed Evan cheating on the show. Whether it's true or not, I can't tell you, but if it isn't true, that would really piss me off if I was Jackie Goldschneider. If it is true, I'd still probably piss me off if it was Jackie Goldschneider. Anyway, this is enough to get you thinking. I have more tea, but I want to leave it here for now so you can contemplate it. I thought you would appreciate this because next episode, obviously, we're going to get the whole skinny on Jackie Goldschneider, you know, that it that she met with Vanessa and Vanessa, Vanessa, but I don't know if they're going to mention both Vanessas. So I wanted you to know that. All right. I'll leave it there. Ooh, I can't wait to read your comments. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And if you're interested in all that like dramatic tea that's been dropped by, I guess, Jim Leonard and his team about me, please go into the Patreon and click on this. So here's my collection. I love my thumbnail I made. Doesn't it look fun? <laughs> Don't you really want to know all my scandals? Um, click on that. Every story in this collection is about me and celebrities and other people you'll know from the Bravo Liberty universe, not necessarily uh, from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, although that's in there as well. But you can see there's Randall Emmett and Andy Cohen and Paris Hilton and P. Diddy. And these are all people that I had interactions with and partied with, et cetera. So I, uh, Playboy, all that. So that's all in this collection. But I think, you know, to address some of the juicier stuff being dropped by Jim Leonard and uh, the other people that work with him, I want to say that you should really get in there and listen to the Dana Wilkie origin part one, two, three, and four. It takes you through 2015 in all its glory. I haven't done the following, you know, the scandals that followed because there's even more, but they're not out yet. And I'm holding on to those because I... That's what I do. Um, and so anyway, but get in there, have fun. There are stories about Tom Cruise and oh my God, you could have so much fun in the Dana Wilkie private stories section of the Patreon. So I'll leave it there. Comment below. Remember I have a live with Kim D on Monday. I've got a, a bunch of, you know, last little bits of New Jersey episodes coming out and then we're done with New Jersey. Bye-bye. See you later. Don't want to talk about it for a long, long, long time. Glad the show's on hold or canceled. Ready to move on. Would like a reboot cast, honestly, so we could have fun with some new people. And of course, tonight, really late around midnight, I'll be dropping my Real Housewives of Orange County recap and gossip dump for this week. Look forward to seeing you guys.